Let me know if you see a command to change the agenda. Being 7 o'clock, I'm going to bring the Dunbar and Board of Selectmen meeting to order. All three selectmen are present, as well as the town administrator. Um, Leo Martel will be videotaping for the benefit of the public, and it will be downloaded on the town's website as well as YouTube by Linda Nickerson. Uh, gentlemen, I have some old business under um, previous meeting minutes from February 18th. Can I have a motion on those? I'll make a motion to approve the regular minutes of February 18th as amended. Second. Motion to read second. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Uh, it's kind of simple as this. Yeah. So it's going to be yeah. <laughs> I gotta take these glasses off. I keep falling out. I love that. Yeah. Don't read it. I'm a little wired for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's make a motion to the Yeah, let's do a, uh, a motion for the RSA 31. Okay. I'll make a motion for RSA 31095-87, paragraph Roman numeral 3B, to accept fundraising for the Reese Cross Gun Run from sponsors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. PDS for an amount of $175 in the Blue Ribbon Property Improvements for $300 for a total of $525. Liam, do you have those checks? Motion has been made. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Okay, we got that portion done. Anybody coming in, Lee? No, nobody yet. We have a town report dedication we were hoping to get underway early tonight before we get into the other discussion on our agenda. So, why don't we just give a few minutes to see if we have a car pull off? Yeah, anybody got any public comment they'd like to bring up for it? Okay, that went quick. <laughs> um, I'll go to a couple mailbox items we have. We cleared up notes from the last week's meeting. Um, deck tail um, did the asbestos removal at the Kimball Pond residence, 41 Kimball Pond, that the town was going to demolish. That was completed today. They did an air test after they were done. And so we're clear to demo those three buildings on site. Dave? Yep. Do you have a timeline for that? Or? Well, I spoke with um, our um, town highway road agent. Mm -hmm. He's going to do the demo, and we're going to use our dumpsters to try and keep it cost effective for the town. And we were hoping to get this done a little bit quicker to beat the road bands, but I think that early next week the road bands are going to come on because that hot weather we had is mm -hmm. starting to really soften the roads up. So I think we might have to wait out that month's period of time. Oh, okay. All right. Just, just yeah. Off, yeah. I was hoping we were going to catch it, but it doesn't look like we're going to. Okay. Just, you know, just be aware we want to know about that, right? Right. The awareness committee, historical awareness. Yeah. Plus, plus moving that stone. You know? Yeah. Yeah, we'll get your eyes on there. Okay, thank you. Bring the one. <laughs> uh, we have another letter here that was addressed to the town administrator, uh, saying how happy she was with our library. Um, our library, Mary Drive, they said is doing a great job. There seems to be something different there every day, and uh, they're very happy. With, she's doing an outstanding job. So it's nice to see you once in a while. I recommend that be um, attached to the board of directors of the library. Yep, that sounds great. I'll make me know that. Right. We'll give it another minute or two and then we'll go into. Uh, Lee's going to give him a call. She goes. He's home. He answered the phone. He did. <laughs> well, I thought when you told me. I said, huh, something must be up. She doesn't sound like she was coming when I talked to you about it. So, so he was home, huh? <laughs> She's probably thinking it's next week. Uh, 
I guess since it's going to be a few minutes for them to come down, we'll start our discussion on the uh, old Route 13 property. Uh, we've got the two butters here, we've got their representation here. Uh, we may take a break just to get that town um, report dedication done. So if we see them pull up, we'll just take a break then and we'll start back up when they're done. Does that sound fair? Mm -hmm. okay. um, we need a letter to start this process off from the Elfano Law Office. And James Susie is here tonight. And I'll probably have him start it off only because he presented the board with it. We also did get a follow-up representation letter from Pat Petiaco. And um, we got a letter from her also asking if there was any decision by our board that she'd like to be present. So we invited the other parties here as well. And we asked them to bring me a butters, which I see both of them here. And so that being said, <coughs> Oh, yeah, just a quick question, Dave. Yeah. Uh, just wanted to make sure that you and I are going to be okay with this. I know that we've been on opposite sides of other matters. Yeah. I just need to mention, you know, that, that we have had that yeah. situation. I want to make sure you were okay with that and you felt you like you could be impartial here. I would like to have you stay on the board unless you feel uncomfortable. No, I think I can be impartial. This is a whole okay. separate property, a whole separate time road, and uh, yep. if you feel any differently, just let us know. No, I, I'm fine with that. Thank you. Okay. Um, that being said, we'll let James start off because we get the letter more or less from you, and then uh, we'll ask Pat to respond to that, and then we'll ask for any input you guys have from the landowners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you've received our letter. I'm not going to repeat that dead horse, but I'm going to go over it in, in summary. Um, the section of Old Route 13 that we're talking about um, uh, is essentially, crucially, right in front of, up front of Mr. Menard's uh, house and goes up the hill or in a southerly direction um, to where it intersects with Holmes Road. There doesn't seem to be any issue um, from any standpoint. My clients, um, through Attorney Panciaco, Mr. Bernard's position, or the board, historically, correct, you know, collectively, um, based upon the board's 2002 letter, that um, from essentially the northerly face of Mr. Menard's house um, all the way up the hill, at least Hill Holmes Road, but certainly up to the top of the hill where Route 13 was attempted to be discontinued. Uh, and then apparently a motion on the floor to town hall meeting, I mean town meeting, um, it was removed from being discontinued so that thereby it stayed from the, it remained a town road. Being a town road, the public, almost with a capital P, the public has a general right to use the full length and width of um, this section of Old Route 13. And as I laid out in my letter, the Board of Selectmen thereby can regulate and enforce the use of that. Mr. Menard's use is specific to this instance here. Um, parking in the travel portion or travel lane of this road, as well as I would represent for the Board, any road is not a quote unquote reasonable use, and there is no reasonable necessity of it. Parking along the side of a public road. Main Street Concord, or even along, you know, this road here, along the side of it, the shoulder of it, for a temporary per time, certainly, but not parking in the middle of the driving lane or in taking it away that takes up a majority of the traveling lane and doing it repeatedly. Um, in Attorney Pantiaco's letter, um, February 3rd letter, she, she gave an account that, well, according to her client, he only parked the tractor there and there was some wood there only long enough to move. I can represent to you, uh, members of the board, that I've stopped in on a number of occasions. I took additional pictures um, that the skid steer bar, the very wide skid steer tractor, has been there on repeated occasions. And it wasn't just for, oh, well, that picture that was in my letter, oh, it was just there for that one day, or it, it's been there repeatedly. And throughout this whole period, from when I sent my letter all the way up to a couple weeks ago when I took the last, probably two weeks ago when I took the last photograph. So this is not a one-time incident. 
Um, Mr. Minaj's attorney is trying to present it as, oh, it's a one-time thing. Uh, the souls are overreacting that's far from the case. Um, it's not reasonable to park in the traveling lane. Another issue, which you can see in the attachments to my letter, um, which are the, essentially the, the satellite photos towards the end of the entire packet that show uh, as my representation, approximation, not a surveyor, not a civil engineer, as to what the, the um, warrant article said the town vote resulted in, what portions of Old Route 13 are still a public way or a public road, thereby the public has a right to pass and repass along the full extent of it. And then, again, the downhill face, or the downhill portion from Mr. Minot's house down the hill um, was the portion that was actually discontinued. The public no longer has a right to travel or be on that part of the land. Um, needless to say, Mr. Menard has a number of things that are within the right of way. So the parallel lines that go along the road there that are shown in my photographs, the right of way is fairly wide. It was a public road. Um, and in part, going uphill from Mr. Menard's house remains a public road. It's not maintained, it's not regularly traveled by the public, but nonetheless, it's still a public road. The right of way is much wider, as it is with many roads, the right of way is much wider than the actual traveling lane portion of Old Route 13, um, which is not also uncommon and fairly common with old roads such as this. Um, the traveling lane or portion of Old Route 13 does not go smack dab down the center line of the right of way. It meanders a little bit back and forth. So what we've got is we've got an individual in base who's treating the public right of way area as his own land. Admittedly, as you can see from Attorney Panciacos, I think first or second attachment, it's a narrow triangle or teardrop shaped piece of land. Um, he bought this piece of land knowing what it was. He doesn't get to use public land or everybody else's land. And he does have other places um, to put his wood, his hay, his plants, toys, trash burn barrel, garbage, tractor, big truck, whatever it may be. He does have other locations on his own property that he can store this stuff. Do you want to stop? Okay, then I'll just so I'll break it too much in the middle of your right. George, why don't you come up and see us? I told him you had a traffic on the same today. Okay. The hot seat. Yeah, front seat. You're in trouble now, George. George, we're able to dedicate the uh, Dunbar and Tyler Report 2020. <laughs> George, oh really? I thought he had to be dead first. <laughs> <laughs> Just close. <laughs> um, George is a longtime um, planning board member and conservation commission member, and he's also on the energy committee. I'm going to read the dedication out loud. Um, George Holt and his wife Deborah Sellers moved to Dunbar in 1993. They bought an old farmhouse on 40 acres at the end of Alexander Road and proceeded to renovate it. The process We're not done yet. was probably <laughs> outlast both of them. <laughs> Concurrently, small-scale farming and holding professional jobs, George and Deborah, a, uh, you're gonna have to help me, neuropathic doctor, naturopathic. naturopathic doctor, cultivate an extensive vegetable garden, run a small maple syrup operation in the spring, and attempt to keep a small flock of chickens contained on their pen, in their pens, so they are not devoured by nearby predators. Their son Colin went to Dunbar Elementary School and graduated from Gosson High School. He currently lives in Alaska, is trained to be an electrician. A modern Renaissance man, George lives a full life. He began work as an environmental consultant and hydrologist. Is that right? <laughs> for Aries Engineering in Concord and is now an owner of the company. He's also an accomplished musician and played the guitar and mandolin and is popular but never to be Grammy nominated bluegrass band. <laughs> the Grass Dogs. Now he continues to seek out other musicians to share his passion and periodically plays music 
with the Hydro Geo Trio. <laughs> Even though a career don't wait for the album to come out. <laughs> Even though the career in the NHL was not in the cards for George, he still is an avid hockey player and can be found on the ice at local ice arenas. A hard-hitting four in the men's B League whose members toss aside their reading glasses and canes to help each other place up their skates to re relive the glory days of their youth. Or playing in the back black ice or other local pond hockey tournaments with his buddies. He and Deborah are avid outdoors people. A former Appalachian Mountain Club hot man, hot man George is a member of the 4,000 Footer Club, an avid cross-country alpine skier, and enjoys kayaking and his passion, a four-work surfer, ripping the waves at the wall in Hampton. <laughs> Who wrote this? A four-work, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's out there now. Okay, <laughs> shortly after moving to town, George got involved in the Conservation Commission, commission and the planning board. Thanks to Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> he later threw caution oh, in a few years ago and became the founding member of the Energy Committee, um, harnessing renewable energy and being a, being a personal passion of his. Always one to cheerfully step forward when a new project or task is discussed, George appears to entirely have ignored the old saying, never volunteer for anything or it will become your job. <laughs> as a result, to talk. yeah. As a result, he has contributed countless hours of his time and expertise to the town of Dunbarton over the past nearly 30 years. From 2001 to present, he has been a Planning Board and Conservation Commission member, and from 2007 to present, an Energy Committee member. Thank you, George. We're going to dedicate this book to yours, and we're going to sign it for you. Thank you. I'm going to bring the right on the page. Brett, right on the page. Brett. Brett's the author. <laughs> we'll, we'll get even. <laughs> of course, you're not going to be able to read our signatures. Thank you, guys. Thank you for all your time. Now you're going to come up and get the picture for us with our masks on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when the corner here, George. This is not so sadistic. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, you're just going to stand on the side here. <laughs> Hey George, you gotta be able to stand up at the town meeting too. You gotta stand up at the town meeting to recognize. Hey and George, you're gonna do this at the other two commission meetings too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I want to apologize for breaking the middle. We were hoping to get that done in the beginning. out in our letter we made uh, several attempts to try to get uh, Mr. Menard uh, to essentially comply. Uh, we've explained what the law in New Hampshire is. Uh, again there doesn't seem to be any disagreement that uh, the portion of old Route 13 that continues to be a public road um, but uh, there's been uh, uh, unfortunately um, no success with our efforts uh, there. And again in 
Attorney Panciaco's July 8th letter, um, she agrees that it's a uh, public road. She also further went on to agree that each party has the, uh, quote, right to use the full width of the road and that the, uh, neither party can block the other's access to it. Um, but unfortunately, that is and has been what Mr. Menard um, has been doing in treating the road, the traveling portion of it, um, as, his, uh, as his own property. Um, in Attorney Panciaco's most recent letter, which the board has a copy of the other February 3rd letter, um, Attorney Panciaco uh, felt it necessary to include approximately 22 pages of um, documents from a court case that really has nothing to do with what's going on right now because Mr. Menard is uh, sort of the actor, if you will, and I unfortunately have to uh, infer and relate to the board that it's just basically uh, simply a distraction method to try to get the spotlight, so to speak, to uh, be turned away and off of Mr. Menard and onto uh, my clients, uh, but the focus should be what's going on. Uh, right James, now. you you speak about the previous court case? Correct. Okay. And, and the documents that were included with that. It does, it does give some clarification. Mm -hmm. I don't think it really works against you guys. It does give you clarification, but all of those, all of what the court found essentially was already in the Board of Selectmen's prior right. letters and everything else. And what I would say is I'd represent to the board that, you know, unfortunately, my clients had a misunderstanding of what the law of New Hampshire is with respect to that portion of the road. Um, and, you know, since then, there isn't any kind of issue that's been going on. They were misunderstood. They're not attorneys. Um, so I think it's straightforward as that, but to, but to say that, you know, this is all going on before and somehow to raise it in a distractor kind of uh, sort of way, um, I don't think was quite appropriate, but that's a choice for another attorney to, to make. Um, more importantly is this issue with uh, Mr. Menard's shed, or the shed that's on Mr. Menard's property. Um, in her February 3rd letter, um, Attorney Panciato tries to characterize the location of the shed and its reference, you can see it in a much smaller form, obviously, but in the draft um, survey plan that Attorney Panciaco attached to her letter. And what I've done is actually took a snippet off of that and, it, and enlarged it. Um, and the shed is uh, what I would represent as not um, slightly into or onto the right of way, but there is a vast majority of it, in fact, that is um, in the right of way. I will represent to you that Attorney Pensiaco is related to me that it has something to do with protecting, and it's in her letter as well, protecting um, Mr. Menard's well, which I have to assume, unfortunately, but assume that it's a, an artesian well, not something that was hand dug and and stone line and stuff like that, but it appears to have been an artesian well, um, and it, we have no information as to really where it's located within the shed. The shed somehow doesn't protect the quality of water in an artesian well. And so that really is an issue as to the red portion of that shed, or the portion that's of the shed that's in red. Again, this is just simply a, you know, an enlargement of the plan that she submitted and then I color what's, you know, colored what's over into the public right of way. As you can see from the photos that I attached to my letter, which is in the, you know, last probably five or six pages of, of my letter, um, that shed is actually right up against the pavement that still is there on and along old Route 13 that remains um, the public way. Um, so it really does impact it. What I don't think is shown, but I mean, not in a large format, but in the plan that Attorney Panciaco attached to her letter, um, uphill slightly from where that shed is located, so to the left of this page, um, is a, a PSNH or Eversource public utility pole, power pole, telephone pole. And so that in and of itself, and it may be in those, you may be able to see it in portions of those pictures on the left-hand side of the photos, um, is a utility pole, which also narrows the area of the right-of-way that my client or anybody using 
um, the public portion of this section of Old Route 13 can actually avail themselves of because um, the power pole jets out. How and why it got put there, I have no idea. I also can tell you that, and I'm sure Attorney Pinciaco would explain this, is that um, she's written to Eversource um, and I, I don't think it's gotten any response back. I would be very surprised if Eversource moved the pole or did anything, you know, with it. So we do have a defined sort of side-to-side -side movement on this, and there is, and I hope that the board will take a closer look at the photos that I've submitted, there is a number of things that are personal property, the shed, his vehicles that are consistently in the right of way, the public right of way, um, along this along this roadway. Um, Attorney Fanciaco also brought out in her letter to the board that my clients have you know other ways of getting to and across their land and everything else. I'll inform the board that under New Hampshire case law that has nothing to do with the public's right to this. I'm a member of the public, and you want to hear it, I should be able to drive down that road. And along that road, the public has a right to it. Mr. Menard doesn't have a right in quote-unquote reasonable use to park and put his stuff for any length of time in or on the traveling portion. And the right-of-way, not going to be blocking anybody, possibly, as long as that use is reasonable. So far, it hasn't been. Um, so... You know, that's really what we're looking for, and the fact that my clients may have some other access or have a lot more land, none of those things are a factor in this matter. Um, so what we're respectfully asking of the Board of Selectmen is your assistance in this to get Mr. Menard to move his personal property, his vehicles, and his shed out of the right-of-way, um, and then keep them out of the public right-of-way. Again, the shed, if it has some protection, um, supposedly, to the, Mr. Menard's well. Apparently, Mr. Menard would be the only one who would be running into his own well. Um, and I don't think that's necessary to have this huge shed uh, out in, in the public's right of way. Ask that the board, again, take another detailed look at the letter and our attachments, um, and, and hopefully, you know, respectfully request that the board take the action that feels appropriate. Okay. Thank you. Um, just to let you guys know, um, all board members did read the package very thoroughly. We had quite a bit of time to review them. And they also did a full review of the file that we had from the town. And I think that you guys have put in the mm -hmm. file because a lot of the stuff in the file is the same stuff you guys both have provided. Okay. So, Pat, I guess, Jamie, you're good for now? Yes, thank you. And, and I'll let you respond at the end as well. But we'll go ahead and get some stuff from Pat here. Certainly. So start out. to just beyond. So I see that as to approximately the shed, but I will 
admit it's not exact. Yeah, somewhere, um, somewhere around where the shed and or house lie right there, they're, they're fairly easy, but the shed would be in the right. section, I think, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. And I think if you look at those blue dots, those are the big posts um, Mr. Sewell put in the middle of the road to prevent my client from using the whole width of the road beyond that because that part has been discontinued. Mm -hmm. So, another thing I want to at least give you a little overview of. He's been there for a while, and I'll get these are just bigger Google followers too. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, mm -hmm. My client. Um, these just kind of give you a little overall. <laughs> four years of the perspective since my client's been living there. And if you start at the back, you see 2014, you're seeing three homes where Mitch lives. And you can see it's pretty heavily wooded. So then you go to 2016 and you can see the disaster there when Mr. Sewell decided he was going to log his property. Now, Pat, let's not go there. Let's well, not overdrive and say it's not a disaster. He has a right to log it. it we retra had, retract no, that. He has a right to log it. Correct. And he doesn't have a right to leave it so the water's running on my client's property. And in addition to that, there was quite a bit of trees cut on my client's property. But you can also see there are other roads. And I agree it's not relevant to the width of the road and who can use it. But looking at this from an objective perspective, you can see that from that and the drawings that we submitted, that the Menard lot is very narrow, non-conforming lot. It's a scrap of land that was created when Route 13 was moved over. There really is no other way into his lot other than that short length. It's a 50 foot wide, maybe 100, 120 feet deep. That's what we're talking about here. And what seems to be missing from this conversation is a word that we use in the law all the time, reasonable. Um, I know of no law that says you can't park on the side of a public right of way. And if I'm missing something, perhaps you can enlighten me. I'll just ask you a quick question. Sure. On the, Pat, what about parking and the, you know, part of this is paid, even though it's poor payment. What about parking in the travel way? My client is not allowed to obstruct the access of the public passing over the road. Right. That, I agree. I, is that what you're asking? Yeah, because I'm going to, I'll just go somewhere quick and try to make it deep. Yes. Keep us from being around the bush. Yeah, right. It looks like in the pictures that we have, mm -hmm. that were provided, and I think you guys both provided pictures of them. I went for four site visits. Oh, good. Bob went for site visit, Mike went for site visit. Um, and with the shed being on the edge of the right of way and, in, and encroaching <laughs> in the right of way to the distance it is, like the picture he showed here, <laughs> mm -hmm. when you park next to the side of the shed, you're in the traveled portion of the right of way, I think, as well. If you look at like where this track is parked. In the first one? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You know, that paved section is the the crest or the center of the road where that is. And it's paved right over up to the shed edge. And so I think what James was saying earlier was the parking is in the travel way, not just on the edge. Whereas if you went past the shed and pulled over maybe on the same side as the shed, it wouldn't be in the travel way. So you're suggesting the trusty part further to the side in front of or in behind the shed? Yeah, I guess either side if you <clears throat> parked it. You know, this whole shed here, mm -hmm. all the, it looks like maybe a foot or two of it, are within the travel right of way here. I believe it was measured at six feet. 
by Beckett Design, but um, yeah, it didn't show us any dimensions on that. Pattern. Yeah, it wasn't. I asked, and that's verbal, so I can't so, confirm that. Um, if we go to the third picture showing the, um, horse, I think a horse or maybe a mm -hmm. trailer. Yes. It looks like that is <clears throat> fairly centered in the travel way where it would be hard to pass around it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and then the last picture shows, I think a pile of wood and a skid steer and it looks like it's um, yeah, why can't you get by there with a vehicle? And let me ask you this question. If you look at the plant that actually located that pole, the pole is smack dab in the middle of that side of the right of way on the west Philly side. That's really the problem. <laughs> that the um, overhead um, light pole. The telephone pole. Yes, across sort of from the shed there. That's right in the it's middle. Located on your <laughs> it's on the Dowdy Clan page. Yeah, it run a line, extend a line uh, off of the southerly face of Mr. Bernard's house and go up towards the top of the page. It's pretty much intersects. That one looks with C with my letter D. Yeah, I'm looking here. <laughs> You can see it in the picture with the truck too, because the right of way goes, I would say, 10 or 12 feet beyond the pole to the left in that first photograph. Oh, I'm sorry, I was looking at the pictures weren't his. Next one, C, I think. Oh, sorry. Here you, go. you see that pole? It's on the edge of the right of right? No, it's actually, if you split it up the middle, it's right in Mr. Soul's half of the road. Oh, right there, is the no, there is no half of the road. This is a public section. Oh, there's, I was looking at an iron pipe, it looks like. So you can see that that telephone pole there is like right in, it's like about 10 feet in from the edge of the right of way. And that really is what the obstruction is here, even more so. Now, I did send a letter in, Jim, I did not get a response, as you said. <laughs> I tried. Um, if that pole were relocated back out of the right-of-way, he'd have free access there with no problem. <clears throat> because if you look at it then from the first photograph, in, in Jim's letter, you can see it's pretty open there to the left of that truck. I'm going to um, I'm going to review to something here, and, and you tell me Pat what your thought is on okay. it. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if this is a two road or three. I'm mostly probably a two road road at the time. Um, I think they said it was 50 feet wide, right, Jim? Oh, so that'd be a three road. Three road. Yeah. Do you remember how many roads it was? Uh. It's 50 feet, so that would be three. Yeah, three miles, so 49 six. Well, yeah, yeah, 49 six is three, yeah. yeah. Um, when, a, when a road is laid out with that number of rods, mm -hmm. um, there are times that within that right of way, they'll go around ledge, go around wetlands, and other things. So the travel portion of the road may not be the center of the right of way, per se. Mm -hmm. So the travels portion of the road could be all the way to one side or all the way to the other side so yep. I think that the travel portion of the road is what we're concerned with being blocked I guess would you would you say that's right John? Cor correct and uh, I was just looking at the, the photograph that, that happened to be attached to, to mine the, front, the very first photograph uh, has the, the big uh, chip, chip truck in it um, and that's you know probably sometime during the summertime because uh, all the yarrow and the weeds are up and everything else and you really can't even see probably the bottom, you know, three, three feet of the phone, telephone pole or power pole. But if you go to the photographs, uh, this is the, the last photograph that's in my packet just before attachment D. Um, all the leaves are off the tree, so I would infer that that's 
sometime during the fall. And the weed, annual weeds have died back, and you can see that the base of that hole, at least it is, it's visual in this photograph, um, is, is well into the weeds on the left-hand side of that photograph, and I would guess probably five, six feet out of the traveling lane. So that is where the public has... That's, that's where the public has the right to be. So... In, the, in response to that, if you can look at the aerial photograph from 2016. Okay. And this was what, four, about four years ago, maybe a little more. You see the truck in the road, right exactly where it's all grown up now? Yeah. It was clear at one time. And I, I'm guessing this was before the trees all bloomed in April. That was the date on Google Earth. But it's it's not something my client needs to maintain to keep his neighbor happy. I mean, this looks like the traveled way went further over towards the stone wall that runs along the road. And the road was a layout too big. Um, by the town yeah. before the state had it and there was a stone wall and I think most of it's still there but not and for some reason yeah, I did see the stone wall the other day yeah when um in fact when the easement was granted by Mr. Soul's predecessor I believe it was maybe his father um that's when that pole was put there I don't know if, I don't know if public servants can do that or not but when was, it, when was the shed put in? It was existing there um, when he bought the home. It was also there um, when Mr. Michael owned the home, and I can't speak to anything after that. Do you know the size of it? Um, do you know how big the shed is? Four by twenty. Four by twenty. You know the air was built much? The shed? Yeah. Uh, Frank Weigel said two years ago he was there for over 10 years, so he died two years ago, so. I saw a note in this file, maybe nobody had seen it before, but I think it was dated around 2000. Okay. Where somebody brought it to the attention of the then building inspector. <coughs> um, so somewhere's, I would think, around or before that time, so it's been there for a substantial amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, there's never a problem before. Um, I think everything has to be down to, it seems, one thing, um, parking in that traveled portion. Um, and, and up against the shed, up to that pole, seems to be the traveled portion of the road at this corner time. In fact, in this mm -hmm. photo, I'm not sure why, but it looks like there's a... It looks like there's a substantial hill there on the side of the road. On the left of the Yeah, side. towards that hole. No, right. that's pretty flat. No, there's, there's a good, it, it goes from there, from that hole to the stone wall. It goes up two, two, two and a half feet. It might not quite that much, but it's another two feet. feet. So it's not, it's not as flat as this piece of paper is that shows this survey flat. That's for sure. There's a drainage ditch there. That right. Okay, so um, we all want to address the board up here, okay, when you guys talk, so just to keep it neighborly somewhat. Um, so, Pat, I guess uh, finish addressing the board with whatever you have for us there and go through your exhibits if you want, and then we'll. Um. I feel like exhibits in, in two big print of the court order, I included that so you could understand this is not new. Plus, I did feel, as you picked up on, that the court gave a pretty straightforward analysis in a couple paragraphs of what had happened here. Um, there was an effort, again, in the, around 2001 to discontinue that road. But that would be a real difficult thing for my client as far as access because of the configuration of his lot and you look at it it probably
probably would create a pretty dangerous situation. Holmes Road coming in as it does is a little unusual. But um, that was the reason why I included the court case, not for any other reason. Yeah, and, then I, and then I said to myself, well, if I leave out parts of it because you don't need it, then they think I'm trying to hide something. That's why it's all there. But once again, I think what's needed here is consideration or reasonable. It has to be give and take on both. As much as attorney Susie will say, oh, yes, you're right. You're entitled to use the full width of the road. There's no one using the road here but the two of them. This is not a public road that people use. The public well, it is a public road, but not many people right. use no, it's not like, you know, he's arguing that members of the public can freely pass up and down, up and down 120 foot length of road, because beyond that it's discontinued. What we're really talking about is two neighbors. Now, one other thing too to point out, just to try to settle this, just so you know this, um, and to get along, if you look on my little diagram, you see an orange fence there. Which one are you speaking This is the map. The plan. The survey plan. My client also raises livestock and has, you know, plantings and all that, the farm stuff. He moved that out of the right of way to keep his neighbor happy. But technically, it's on his own land. That's beyond the house, you mean? Yes, the orange. He's gone to great lengths because he was having trouble too getting back behind there. So he did try to keep things civil. He made that added effort. That was a lot of work. There, but I also think there has to be consideration of you want to leave a certain amount of space there so people can get in and out. Tell us what's reasonable. If a vehicle can drive by, is that reasonable? Um, before we answer that, okay. I'm going to ask just I'll a I'll leave that with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, in looking at these photos, mm -hmm. it seems like the only spot that seems to be the, the underlying issue from the photos and from the conversation here, it seems to be directly adjacent to the shed. Mm -hmm. Is there a way we could park any of those vehicles that are more than, you know, it's not like parking it there for a few hours. These are overnight. We have pictures and he has mm -hmm. pictures and mm -hmm. I've gone for four visits. Wow. These guys have gone out. And that's, I've only done that since you guys sent these packages. I just on my way by and swinging. Mm -hmm. um, I saw the skid steer there all times. Nothing else. I didn't mm -hmm. see any of these other trailers or anything else was out of the way. Is there any way we could park that? Has the shed on another piece of property so it's not within that travel way to have this kind of pull away, or is that something that you guys are going to do? Let me ask you a question is, and if you look at this map yeah. on the front lawn, I mean, this is, it, we, it, it, it's I'll pretty, give you an example because your, your client's steep. nodding his head yes behind you. Mm -hmm. After the shed, there's, I think in this picture, like there's a pile of sawdust or something back in that area. Do you want to come up and take a look yeah. at it, Mitch? Mitch, come up and take a look at this. Were you asking to put the skid steer way out back there? Just past the shed so it's not within the travel portion. Sure. You know, because I'm, I'm thinking that you guys, as neighbors, would like this to go away, and I'd like to find something reasonable so the town doesn't have to get into a lot of enforcement issues here and have the police down there all the time and mm -hmm. you know we did ask the uh, uh, the police chief to be present we have a member here okay. and only for the fact that so they know mm -hmm. after this meeting tonight hopefully we have a clear path of what's going to be open and what's not going to be open and kind of have some direction from the select board mm -hmm. and uh, after reviewing your cases here and looking at everything you guys have presented and we do have a previous select board's um, kind of decision to try and keep this open earlier. Um, as, it, it, as a roadway there, we were going to try and rely on that decision, you know, and try and come up with something to, to take care of the parking. 
we would really, as a board, like to not get into the whole shed and well mm -hmm. issue at this point if we can avoid that. I know that it is within the right of way. It was done the four-year time. Mm -hmm. And I think to try and work that backwards at this time would not be beneficial for the town or you guys. Um, but I would like to keep it targeting. The, the shed has created a choke point, which has made it very inconvenient for the neighbor. Yeah. And, and as a choke point, that should be avoided. We should avoid the choke point. I, I agree with that. Um, I also think that the pole is a big piece of this. Yeah. Now, I guess what might be helpful here is for us to be clear, where do you think the class six point ends? Well, is it at the shed? Is it beyond the shed? I would like to not use the shed at all as a reference only because okay. That wasn't in the original description, but the house was. Okay. But if you do look at your picture here of your diagram, the shed is all almost even with the house at the angle it is on the back if you took a straight line across. Okay. And, um, you know, if this was going to become a larger issue, we'd probably have to go out there and mark the, have a survey or mark the end of the road. I was hoping not to get into that type of yeah. situation if we could avoid it. Yeah, we didn't want to get into it either now, but if we go from the back wall of the house and maybe go straight across to where the first blue dot is, I, I get a point of reference so we know the, where the line is. I think that could be part of the problem. Right. Um, it's and it said just past the house, so, and I don't know if that existing little bump up on the house was there back in the day, either that could have been added since then. In the back? Yeah, that little bump up. Yeah, that's not even a yeah, so that's probably wasn't there, so. Right. Okay, so that's probably reasonable, so if, he, if he's able to, see, <coughs> if he's able to reference, I, the board, I have this in my attachment as one of the, the satellite photographs that has a yellow line going from the right yeah, side of the page to the left side of the page. Yeah, I'm just yeah. seeing your kind of reference to the way out back so you don't have to listen to it. What about the road trucks? Yeah, the road trucks. Yeah, the same area. Which is about the same area. Which is about the same area. Yeah, to understand what kind of person he is. They're all those kinds of things which are two of the kids are going around and just get me to the Similar to what he had done, like his both your butters too because they have something to say and then yep. I just want to try and get a I'm trying to get some clarity yeah you know? so if we have that clarity and uh that keeps that pinch point as Mike had stated away and uh, I think it will avoid a lot of conflict I think so too I think having a clear line would be really helpful Dave the um but you know as I look at the, the dump truck in the first picture mm -hmm. that's towards that's back there. Yeah, some are. But the other, the horse trailer is not. He says that was only there for a day. Um, the skid steer, that's easy to slide by. But, but even if it's for a day, I mean, what's, I mean you if you're denying, you're denying someone access to the property. I would say at that point that if, 
um, Mr. Sewell needs a wider passage, he needs to push the brush back to where it was in 2016 and widen the pathway on his side. Well, I think that, that before, we, before we go back, <coughs> Mitch has already agreed to park it yes. past the shed. Yes, he will. So that gets rid of that pinch point at that point. Yep. So I, wanna, I don't want to go backwards in our meeting here because we've kind of nope. gone forward. I don't want to keep going back because we'll be here all night talking about the same little pinch point. Yeah. No, we, he will do that. He'll get so behind he'll do that. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to listen to to uh, anything they have to say now, Pat, unless you have something nope, further. I'm all set. And then, you know, bring it back at the end, make sure. And you know, what, are your, what are your thoughts with this? I'm trying to come yep. up with a solution that works for both of the landowners here. Right. Um, Appreciate the board's efforts with respect to um, Mr. Minari continuously parking not just the skids here but other vehicles and um, equipment um, alongside of or in the general area and uphill from uh, the shed. It's in the right of way, the public right of way. Um, it, it does not, this issue and this problem caused by Mr. Minari does not relate just to these two people. This is a public portion of the class five road. It's a town road. Mm -hmm. He has a small piece of property. That's not in dispute. What also isn't in dispute is he bought it knowing what he was buying. He can't land grab here. End of story. It's that also that is also very clear. If you look at the both Attorney Panciaco's 2016 aerial uh, as well as the, the zoom portion, if you will, that shows the yellow line um, with the, sort of the demarcation um, of the public section of Old Route 13 and then the non-public section. Um, the bottom of the attachment that I have, you can see a sort of a, a, a I guess a tan or an orange-like triangle um, in that that's all Mr. Menard's wood pile. Most of that, I'll say most, because some of that wood has been hanging around for quite a long time, is now a whole parking area. He also has a, some sort of Subaru station wagon on a trailer that's been there for a number of years. And he has other places to put both his skid steer tractor as well as his trailer and everything else. He's using the public section of the road for his convenience. Well, I think he, I think, does not get I think he just acknowledged tonight that he would not park there. But it's not just in the area of this pinch point. Oh, absolutely. I, I totally get what the board is trying to do. But, but that's, the, well, that's the most critical part. But anywhere along that road, which is the, the public domain, right. it, he can't block it. And that's that's common sense. I wouldn't expect him to be in the middle. Would you uh, agree? I, I do not disagree with the board member that it, it is or should be common sense. But as the photographs show, it isn't common sense because otherwise these photographs wouldn't exist with this split wood and this wood that's all in this, the huge sawdust pile, everything else, the pile of wood that's in the other photograph, I can't just say, yeah, deliver me a three cords of wood on Main Street and dump it and then say, oh, don't worry guys, you know, I get to use this out in public, I have a right to use this and it's in the travel lane. You can't do that, that is not reasonably, it's, oh, I'm just gonna park this horse trailer, this flat deck trailer here and then, you know, School Street, uh, it's just going to be there overnight. Don't worry about it. I got two cars that you can't park in the traveling lane. End of story. Four way flashes while you're loading and unloading for a short period of time, an hour or two or something when you're moving. Okay, fine. But you can't dump raw materials in the public way. You just can't. So that's first and foremost that this isn't just about these two people. It is about them, but it's not just about them. Can't store, the board member just said, firewood and there are huge plastics wrapped you know if you guys saw them i'm presuming but the large plastic wrapped white bales of hay that are also now right there in the public right of way he doesn't get to use the public's land end of story all the other stuff that's there the burn barrel there's another picture with kids toys car seats whatever they may be his access also if his property is not the issue, it's not the problem. He has easy and readily access to this piece of property that he owns. Other than the fact that the stuff that he puts there is blocking his own life. But that access is not the issue. Um, and 
parking is not being done on the edge of the right of way. It's within the traveling way. So moving this skid steer further downhill or in a northerly direction gets it at least off the public's land, but I'll inform the board that being an abutter to this discontinued portion of old Route 13, as shown in one of these satellite phones, in this green hash mark area, my client, as an abutter to this discontinued portion under Nancy's statutory law, has an unabridged right to access his property without regard to whether he has access otherwise along the entire width and extent of the discontinued, that's statutory right. So Mr. Menard cannot park down there. It was an error of fact and law for Attorney Pat Santiago to say, oh, well, that's your half of the road down there too. It may be, he may be the fee owner of that road, but my client has a statutory right to cross over it. So even now, oh, well, Mr. Menard moved the fence post and fence for his, his critters and his animals. That's his choice to be putting critters on such a teardrop, tiny triangle piece of land. The other part of it is, is that he put those fence posts and the barbed wire out there and said, no, I'm not going to move them. Again, maybe that was his part of not understanding properly this elusive middle of the road document that everyone misunderstands by adverse possession. Um, and so now he comes in with his attorney and says, well, geez, he's already moved those. He never informed us that he moved them. And the last communications we had was they weren't going to get moved. Can you hold that a quick second? Yep. Yeah. I hate to stop you, Ms. Yeah. but I think she said the posts were put up by someone. No, there's there's two different two That's different things going on, if you will. There are um I'm getting a little confused. Uh, no, that's, it's it's per, that's, no, that's a good point to bring up. So, if the board looks at um, if the board looks at where the, 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 the white of where the house is shown in this uh, scrunched map, it has tax. It has the word tax map G block ten that that script. Going to the towards just barely to the top of the page in the dotted portion of the. Um, discontinued portion of old Route 13, you'll see a line, a little hash mark, a line, a little hash mark, and that's the, I believe, the orange um, line or orange fencing. Okay, that's the fencing that he had up, which he took down. Which was, I believe, was, okay. which I believe were um, either smaller post. It was like chicken wire. Smaller post and barbed wire. Okay. Right. Okay. For they the, weren't elected. Beef critters or something like that, whatever it was, but that's the... The other thing that we're referring to, so along that line and hash mark line and hash, it says wire fence. If you go to the left or back up the road towards the shed, in that same along that center line, you can see some either squares or circles. I'm not really sure what they are. In the blue. Um, they have some kind of blue coloring to them, but don't, that's underneath that. It says wooden posts. Those wooden posts, admittedly, were installed by my client with this middle of the road confusion and misunderstanding. So that's the, you know. Are they still there, Jim? Uh, are those posts? Those posts are, I mean, I that's. I see them in any of the pictures. I was just saying, that's also a non issue, but for the board's understanding as to what's in here and what Attorney Pinciaco was referring to as fencing and what is also okay, shown. I did get confused yep, on that. No, that's, yep. I can see the two different areas now right. where your client had some fencing up and now that's gone and then right. I see the posts and those are gone. So yep. Both of those areas. I, and, and, again, and again, because as it's shown in the enlarged satellite photograph that we were referring to with the yellow line that I have as an attachment um, mm -hmm. to my letter, the towards the top of the page is the green um, diagonal lines which is at least an approximation as to where the road going in a northerly direction downhill along the roadway is now the discontinued portion according to what we've got from the town warrants and the votes and everything else that the full extent of the right of way under the interest statutory law because mr menard is an abutting property owner and my clients are abutting property owner each of them still have 
full statutory right to pass and repass along the full length and width of that right of way. That's that's there. That in you know I I would I will represent that my clients have not in writing has to be waived. They have not waived it, and I would guess that Mr. Menard hasn't waived it either. So it still exists. So that portion, or the downhill portion, if you will, um, it pretty much is between these two landowners, these two neighbors. That's what the statute says. Access is not the point. So if you look at what I said before, the 2016, April 2016, satellite image, which, as Attorney Panciaco indicated, well, must be, you know, late fall, early spring, something like that, because there's no leaves on down towards the, the bottom, where almost you can imagine route, the, the current Route 13 heading northerly, Holmes Road heading generally northerly where they intersect. That little triangle of land is all Mr. Menards, and he can park his tractors, his trailers, his big trucks, or whatever else down towards the, you know, the below his house and below the parking lot that's sh shown there, the driveway and parking lot area. There, you can still see some wood that's there, and that was back in 2016. Um, so he does have other areas on his land where he can park and store his equipment, his wood, his kids' toys, his bales of hay, whatever they may be that are not otherwise within the public right of way and aren't going to cause any kind of pinch point or kicking the can down the road and we're back here in three months or six months dealing with, yet again, something else in the right of way. It should be absolutely crystal clear, nothing can get put in the right of way because of one reason or another, the public and or both parties get to use it for width and extent. The town, the board, this board's own letter that I attached to my letter, which is the, this, uh, December, May, is it? May, May 2nd, 2002, from the Board of Selectmen. Uh, Greg, Bill, Hammond, and Swindler so all signed it saying, you know, this means that the general public can use the right of way and cannot be blocked in any way. That's pretty straightforward English. It means not in any way, not for any purpose, and no matter how big or small your property is and whether you've got access otherwise to it. Um, I would caution the Board against coming to a conclusion or uh, you know, making a formally, making a statement that I think it was heading in is that somehow it's okay for, you know, Mr. Menard or an abiding landowner to park something repeatedly and or continuously either in the public's right of way or in the right of way of the discontinued portion of old Route 13. I understand why Attorney Pantiaco, on behalf of her client, is representing or raising the argument that the PSNH or Eversource utility pole is the quote-unquote problem, I would suggest that the board take a closer look at the photographs and actually go back out there if you want and actually take a look at the topography of where that pole was put. The pole was put there because there isn't a travel lane there and they, I'm sure, they presume that it was outside of the roadway or anything else and it was a safe bet for them to put it there. Not surprised that PSNH Eversource didn't respond and I would Bear the, you know, bet against any kind of person that would want to say that, oh yeah, every source is going to move that pole. So It is typical that they do put them in the right of way as well as all the other road areas, and, right? and they're near the, near the travel portion, but they're not, it's not in the travel portion. So as it looks on this nice, nice flat Exhibit C that Attorney Pensiaco put, technically it is in half of the public right of way, but um, it's already been pointed out by a board member, but it's, it's not near the travel portion of Old Route 13 that is still a public road. Um, and so we've got this issue that I hope that it gets pinned down, that nothing can get put in the right of way, nothing can get be put in the right of way, either the public section or the section of Old Route 13 that's been discontinued for two different legal reasons. Thank you. Thank you. Your client's raising his hand in the back. Do you want to speak first? Okay. This is the hole. You put up the middle of the road. Just to be clear. Those are aligned the hole right away. And I, those are a bend removed, right? Yep. 
Yes. So what my do you think client, was that? My client had them. They had one nail center. Why do you bring this up now? Um, just so there's clarity. I disagree. This wasn't your client's friend. No. No, that is the poles that Mr. Sewell put up the center line of the road to keep my client on his side of the center line. Um, but those are gone. Yeah. So beyond to the north of the line that we just talked about, I disagree, but that's a civil matter. It's not something that this board has to decide whether there are implied private rights to use the full width of the right of way. The town released the public rights when it discontinued the road completely to the north of that line. And you don't need to decide that. He can park on his side of the center line beyond the class six portion. And we have to take that up in the courtroom. I'd be happy to do that. Right, can you tell me, is this wood um, out here on the edge still in the roadway? Is that all gone at this point? I, I, I think the wood picking. The, the wood? The fine wood, yeah. The one from the ball cap? No, it was the one on the corner. It looks like of home zone and yeah, the bales have failed. Near the bales of hay. Near the bales of hay. Right there. Yeah. 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 Ye
Just, just on the record, I'd like to point out that RSA 231 colon 43, Roman numeral 3, so the last section, states, and I'll quote directly, no owner of land, comma, without the owner's written consent, comma, be deprived of access over such highway at such owner's own risk. And this is within 231 colon 43 is the power to discontinue class four, five, and six highways. So the very fact that a portion, as it says in class in section Roman number one, a portion of the road was discontinued by town vote, exactly specifically what we've got here, Roman numeral section three, subsection three says that no owner shall be, uh, no owner of land shall be deprived of access over such highway. Presumption is there, it's an abutting landowner, not someone all the way across some town, but shall not be deprived of access over such highway at such owner's own risk. So they go on to it by your own risk, but you can't be deprived of it, and nowhere in the statute does it say, because I read verbatim, unless you've got some other way to get to you to and from your property. There's nothing in this statute, and this statute is still valid. So, do we have a copy of that statute for you? Uh, sure. Using his area, isn't that depriving him of access? He can come in here just fine. But he still gets to use the whole No, he doesn't. But I would, I would agree with Attorney Pansiaco um, that the from that yellow line in my attachment, that's a satellite um, image, uh, to the top of the page, meaning in the northerly direction or further down, going down the hill, mm -hmm. um, is or should be specifically outside of the board's sort of purview or hollow yes. to the side. But we're yes. sort of and that's why I was saying it was a green yep. question. Yeah. That's, it's it's not not green green. Green. Yeah. that's fine. So my client will agree, every, he will not park to the south of that line. And anything else will be parked beyond that pinch point, hopefully behind his building. I, think it, I don't think the decision has to be made here. I think this can just easily just reaffirm what was decided 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. We can deliberate after. Yep. <coughs> so we're, we're open to that. We can make that happen. Um, and anything to the south there, we'll do our best, everything. But I don't think that you can say he can't park on the edge like anybody else parks downtown. Because that's a bilateral right, that's a public right. As long as he's not obstructing the travel way. And for a short period of time. Well, I mean, what do you do on, on the road downtown in Dombard? When people park on the side of the road, you get a 50 foot road with 24 feet of pavement. Right? You've got eight feet on either side on the shoulder. But they don't leave their car there for three or four days. He comes home from work. You know, I mean, public use is public use at the time that they need the use. It isn't a, a sustainable use. But public use, as long as they're out of the way and the right of way is not obstructed, and vehicles can go in and out freely, and he's right on the edge, right on, right on the edge of his own lawn. Why is that a problem when parking is a violent use that's allowed within a public way? Well, I, I'm going to go back and just uh, say something. The shed comes out into the right of way. Mm -hmm. And so parking adjacent to that shed does block the travel portion of road. So we've right. kind of already cleared mm -hmm. that up already, yes, so I don't have. want to go backwards. Right. But what Bob is saying is that section of road from this um, southerly from this yellow line should stay open mm -hmm. and the travel way as we've stated earlier and it's obvious doesn't always stay in the center you know like your example there's not always eight feet on one side sometimes there's four yeah. foot and twelve foot or whatever but the travel way of the road I would hope would stay open and that's what we're really and I think Mitch has said he yeah. would do that so yeah. that's, re that's reasonable and fair so that we're not obstructing any access so I think now uh, we've heard from the attorneys. I'd like to hear from the landowners because you guys showed up. If your attorneys are willing to do that or want you to do that. Yes, I'm awesome. 
Um, I've spoken from my clients, I believe, and uh, I didn't know if there was anybody about it, you know, any other. I haven't seen any about it, but I won't be able to say anything. So you guys are good for now? For now. If Mitch gets to park anything at all on this right away, yeah. that means I do too. Right, and that's the down, that's the slippery slope. And then you got a mess again. Right. Right. So, no, we're good. Okay. Mitch, go ahead. So is the hay fine where it is? It's not because the, there's what's well, that? It's not. It's, it's, is it in the right order? Well, the spruces I go like this. The roads here by hay's inside on my front grass. Not on the road. And the town has the right to cut so all those trees up. They cut down too. The town. The town has the right to cut down and maintain within the town's right of way. Yeah, those hay. And if those hay bales are which, take a closer look at, again, my approximation. Um, unfortunately, it's my understanding from my clients that the um, state <laughs> the state highway found that was um, there at that corner of what's now Mr. Menard's property um, is shown in these prior um, New Hampshire DOT copies was actually removed by either Mr. Michael or someone, but no, the, Mills. The, the, the concrete bow with the hole in the top and everything else that if you, when you drive into the top of the existing current Route 13 and all four tires are on the Old Holmes Road, immediately on the right and left you can see the granite, no, the actually concrete, four concrete old state monuments that demark the limitation of the current or now public right of way. The one that was Basically, that is near these spruce or arborvitaes and these bales of hay. Geez, it was always in the way, so we ended up pulling it out, and it's no longer there. That does mark the town's right of way. So, uh, as as much as it may not be welcome news to Mr. Menard, I can completely sympathize. But yes, that's where the right of way is. That that is the problem. It looks like there is one bound yeah. still there. Correct. An iron pipe. So if you measured 50 feet from that iron pipe, that you kind of went down straight. Now it looks like there's a draft of a survey. Was it? Did he put bounds in when he surveyed it? I don't think so. And I have one other question for you. Um, how come if he surveyed it and he had this all this information, obviously it was available. How come he didn't show the class five section versus the class six section of the survey? Was it was it not recent or? Well, are you talking about? Um, old Route 13? I'm talking about Old Route 13, the survey you guys provided. And in, in, in the DMAR, the line of discontinuance, not discontinuous? Sorry. Yeah, it's not. It's yeah. not shown on that, right. So you got Old Route 13, and it's, you know, this is also Old Route 13. Yeah. But see how this is shown shaded like this is all discontinued? That should be from after the house, as we kind of talked about tonight. So how come he didn't show that as? This part, yeah, he wasn't sure where this line was either. The survey? Well, all he has is the town report. Yeah, well, it says, to, it says to just after the house, so I think that, right. you he, know, a surveyor is the person that would determine, um, you know. But he was more concerned with making sure he got the boundaries here, and right. he didn't go down this and see it. Right, I knew that, but yeah. he's labeled that as old Route 13, but yeah. shows it as old white, and then this is shaded. Mm -hmm. My only thought here, Pat, was... This was the center line, yeah. Right, my only thought here is if it gets sold, somebody's going to think it's discontinued right up to where Holmes Road is, because right. your survey doesn't show it mm -hmm. accurate, so I think yeah. if it is a current one and you can talk to the surveyor, I think that... It's still in draft, so we can add the yeah, details maybe, to it. But just so if, it, if it, Mitch goes to sell yeah. a house... And, you know, I don't want them to think it's discontinued all the way up to the corner of Holmes Road. That's to your advantage. Um, I do agree with you. If we can agree and you tell us that this line is a good line to use, I will ask him to add that because and we I haven't would, recorded this. And I, would, and I would ask him just to go back and do as close as he can off the written record of that day, 1963. I you know, think because, he would agree. Well, yeah. did you concur? And it does say just after the house, and you know whether it's a foot after or three feet after, that's all going to be a gray area to me. But it's, as long as it's after, yeah. And he shows that on your plan. I think it would, it would help it be more accurate. If you concur, 
with that line on the back of the house, that corner we drew, I will have him add it that way because it actually it's your body that made that decision, yeah. you're clarifying right. that. And so I, I'll have him add that. And I would say I'm, you know, no, no official deed research or anything, but I did look online at the deeds to make sure who was, you know, Mills and Mills Jr. and all of this. Pick some different names, guys. We, you know, oh, yeah. I mean, just don't name everybody yeah. the same first name in your family, but you know, for seven generations. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I was able, as best my understanding, I was able to sort out, you know, who's junior yeah. and the old, you know the old man mm -hmm. or whatever. And which I re referenced everything older to it. Everything lined up that way, so I didn't mm -hmm. think there was any question between you guys. Right, but I would think that a survey would would also be able to double check all of that to make sure that what has been discussed is spot on. I just didn't want the modern survey not mm -hmm. to show what's actual, you know, in the field. And, I can and so if we show that. those two sections of roads, I think it would be helpful. And then, yeah. you know, like Mitch was saying, where is, you know, if his bales might be a foot out in there right away or whatever, mm -hmm. if, if they label that corner again, that one that was removed there, at least Mitch would have a reference to, mm -hmm. you know, know where. So put that pin in. Yeah, I would think it would be helpful if it, I mean, you guys paid for the survey there. I mm -hmm. think that that way they can yeah, see the 50 feet yeah. really easy right there, and you guys can try and stay clear of it and try and maybe get back to. Well, the purpose of the survey, too, is to locate the roads yeah. and where it was so that we. Right, because it may not be all the way against that stone wall. We just didn't know. Um, so, just if that was helpful, but I'll have him add that and then put the, the, um, the northern portion before we discontinue by the time. Put the data in the boat. You can do that. That's no problem. Okay. All, All right. right. Thank you. Sure. Mitch, did you have anything else you want to say? You guys are good. Um, James, you guys are good now. We'll bring it back to the board on my ass. I would have the other thing I would say is for the board to refer back to uh, what we have, uh, what my clients have asked for. Here's the January 8th letter that's been submitted to the board. Yeah. 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 I already covered that, but you come to some for that. Yeah. 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 Um, Jim, bringing it back to the public, I can't see around the corner there. But Anyone over there want to talk? Neil, yeah. you have a, a, a note from the general public? Or? I guess I own the road too, so I'd like to see it open. All right, bringing it back to the board for discussion now. Um, we've heard from both sides. We've heard from the abutters. Um, I'd like to refer back the board to the letter from the previous select board. So I'm going to read through that, and then we're going to read James's cover letter, see what he's asking for. And if we think it needs to be added or subtracted, or if we're going to say that we believe that this uh, original 2002 decision was enough and we're going to just abide by it and then use this meeting as clarification on parking there, because I think we've got a lot cleared up in this meeting tonight that we're here. And, uh, you know, the police department is here and they're going to be aware of it. So I think if both both the butters uh, abide by that, I think it would be a beneficial solution. On uh, May 2nd, 2002, the letter said, to whom it may concern from the select board at the time, the following is a Dunbarton Board of Select a report on the status of OB13 as found in the town records. On March 12th, 1963, at the town general meeting, Old 13 was discontinued and banned from just below John Mills House now that of Andrew Michaels, to the foot of Mills Hill. This means that all the butters to that section of the road now own to the middle of the old right-of-way. The section above Andrew Michaels' house to the intersection of the present Route 13 across the street from Fred Mills Jr. is still a town right-of-way. This means that the general public can use this right of way and it cannot be blocked in any way. Abutters can cut brush and trees on their side of this right of way. However, if they plant anything, it is to be stated that during general road maintenance and upkeep of the right of way, these things may be removed and or damaged. Removed or damaged. So I think that 
letter is very clear that it says this means that the general public can use this right of way and it cannot be blocked in any way. Um, I think that this board would like to reaffirm, I'll wait to hear back from my other selectmen, reaffirm this letter tonight as well as state that the, uh, let this meeting stand on its own as well as the discussion of not parking in the town right of way on the class five portion of that old route 13. Um, notes that I have here, uh, no parking in the travel portion of the right of way or on the road service should be allowed. Uh, Mitch gave us the shed size which is 12 by 20 because I could find no building permit or a year that it was built. Somewhere around year 2000, I think. Uh, the well location and looking at the um, septic plan shows the well um, in the shed. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if you guys were aware, but there is a septic plan here on file. And it shows that there is a well head in there. And, you know, we've made some uh, progress here that any parking will be done will be past the shed. And hopefully, Mitch, I'd like to reaffirm that if you can park on your property instead of the right of way to try and keep a civil discrepancy from going on, I think it would behoove you to try and do that. I'm not ordering you or telling you. I just think that, you know, if you guys can try and work to a better end, I think that, you know, I think everybody learned something about where the land is, where the road is, and I think we've come a long way here. Well, do you have anything you want to add? Well, you know, the concern I had with parking on the right of way is it isn't hard afterwards because you have a vehicle there or whatever, is now you're in the travel lane when you're putting another vehicle there, as if you've gone there several times and looked at the pictures that may have been an occurrence. Mm -hmm. There is some things there and so some things out in the travel. And so it does make it difficult for people to get back and forth. Uh, not that everybody <coughs> uses it. You know, maybe hunters. I don't even know. I know these souls may use it. Maybe in the same time uh, he's using it at the same time. So uh, I guess that could be, that's my concern with the conflict with using continuous use of the right-of-way and forcing things to be in the travel lane. So, uh, you know, I would concur with what they did in 62. And, and we have and reaffirmed two. again in 2002. 2002. And, uh, you know, uh, I, a little bit of a concern with a building being in part of a building being in a right-of-way. And unfortunately, there's a well in that building and of course there's no salting much salting or anything going on there but if that ever gets some kind of development and then you start treating the road i'd like to see make sure that the town's held harmless if the well gets contaminated yeah and so um mike what are you set off i'm all set We'll give us your thoughts on that. I'm I, I, I with Bob. I don't want to get here, go in a circle again, but I think, I think previous decisions were wise. And uh, I think uh, he owns uh, both gentlemen. I mean, I've heard history of uh, posts in the road and they would be moved. That's a non issue now. But I hear other issues about big vehicles in the road. We just got to work to not block the road. That's the a, that's a bottom line. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, uh, we, we can avoid court, so be it. Uh, I don't think we need to go to court. I like to have vehicles ticketed or towed out of the air. I think that's a, that's an extreme measure that we have to keep it clear. Uh, and I think it's, uh, we'll, we'll do that if we have to. I do not want that to happen. I do not want that to anybody. And uh, I, I think we can work this out. Uh, now the other portion, the North Lee portion, I, I concur with you, but I think that may be a civil matter mm -hmm. to be decided, but not, not by us. I'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, yeah. I just ask one more time. You get something from yeah. me? Um, when I didn't hear from anybody, was what about emergency vehicles? You know, you may have to access that. We've had fires in the woods many times before. Uh, people getting hurt out in the woods, we've got to get out there and get them. So 
But that just reiterates why it should be clear. Yeah, that's, that's my point. It needs to be open for in, even emergency vehicles, you know. I'm sure uh, John Wiggins would have agree with that. Yeah. And, and the only other thing I would add is, you know, to change a decision or make something different, unfortunately, we have a lot of different road situations in town. And so it doesn't take much for someone to say, wait a second, you did it for this one. What, why am I so different than that person? So, you know, that's the other thing to consider. Right. Um, well, have you, could you review what the, um, the, the, the main uh, request If I just, I don't want to say shorten this, but uh, um, the, the page three of three, there's a bulleted or dashed, yep. a, a summary of three things. I tried to put it at the end of the still. Do you want to read those, James? Or read them? Uh, I, I certainly can read them, and, yeah. if I, I, but I don't want to step in the little bit of part there. And, uh, again, this is uh, the, the last section, last paragraph of uh, my letter to the Board of Selectman January 8, 2021. The first bulleted item, uh, which is what uh, my clients um, had instructed me to request as far as uh, relief or action from the Board of Selectmen in connection with this matter, um, in requesting that the, the Board of Selectmen uh, issue a cease and desist order to Mr. Menard commanding and requiring him to, and then the first bulleted item is immediately remove each vehicle, tra trailer, tractor, hay bale, wood, and, and or all other items of personal property from within the public right of way. Second, immediately remove all structures, landscaping, and or other improvements from the public right of way and relocate same onto his, meaning Mr. Menard, relocate same onto his land beyond the public right of way. And third, provide assurances that he, Mr. Menard, guests of Three Homes Road and or anyone acting on his behalf will keep all vehicles, trailers, tractors, hay bales, and other animal feeds, manure, wood slash firewood and or all other materials and items of personal property or use from being parked, placed, and or stored, even if temporarily, within the public right of way. I mean, I think, I think these previous selectmen did it very clearly. This means that the general public can use this right of way and it cannot be blocked in any way. I mean, um, I understand you've broken this down into those three bulletin points and it uh, talks about all of those other items. But I think that we've talked it out tonight, but uh, they're not going to block that and they sh shouldn't have the right to block that. <coughs> Do you guys want to read each of those items into a, a motion? You want to I, 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 on that I previous step? I think previous step is, is fine with me. I think uh, I would like to get our, our legal opinion uh, from the town uh, about uh, you know, the portion of the building that's been there for 20 plus years as far as uh, what, uh, what avenue that we have to follow with that. I don't think I can make a decision tonight on that at all. I right. don't know what portion of the kind of alluded to that as well. You may be running having having our attorney you know, yeah. every, so. Pat, have you um, come across any uh, buildings in a right of way before during your time and have um, any releases been done or anything to that effect to, uh, to hold the town not liable or um, I wouldn't have any trouble doing that at all. Because um uh, what we're working at is, you know, we weren't aware that that building was within the right of way until we just got this paperwork. And we didn't know that we had to survey how right. far it was, but yeah. I don't think Mitch would have any problem at all releasing the town for liability. It actually protects as well. It's his benefit, so that wouldn't be a problem at all. 
You're talking about a, like a hold harmless agreement? Right, if that's what you're asking. I don't think that's yeah, We'll probably get a legal opinion. Sure. The other thing is, um, until your letter stated that there was a well there, I had no idea the well was there because that wasn't on the map that I could see. So mm -hmm. uh, we would probably like the same type of thing with the map like bulbs. And mm -hmm. We're not really salting yeah. that portion of the road, so it's quite a ways from there. But because it's in the town's right of way, I think that you know there should be some some mm -hmm. legal um, documentation yeah. put together on that shed in the well. Yeah, we can certainly do the whole harmless, but I'll wait to hear from you after you talk to your attorney. I have no problem with that. And if um, you wanted to draft something in advance, um, so we could have a look at that as well and look at the wording of it, that might not, you know, that might not hurt no. Okay. Jim, have you run into that at all before? And, and do you guys have any issue? Now, this is the town public right of way portion we're talking about, not the part that's been discontinued. Right. But as far as I can tell, that ship's been there since around 2000. Yep. From the only one note I could see in the file that the town has. Right. And the well could have been there longer. Although I think we can look that well up with the state. Maybe. Maybe we can do that because I know the state does have well locations labeled. We already checked it. I don't think they. This one doesn't have them. Yeah, the well water. I know it was yeah. fairly recent that they started doing that. So. Yeah. I think the critical point they appear is up. Uh, blocking the access, right? And uh, that's paramount about paramount. I, I see that from your... Yeah, I, I can certainly make this request outside of the, the meeting uh, to attorney text the action, but if one, the board has already requested as far as the survey and, you know, the limits of the public right of way, um, if I can request that, you know, while the surveyors are there, they take a shot, so to speak, of the wellhead for elevation and location, so that's also plumped. And I think they have a copy of it, but it is, it is on your survey of your, that wellhead is on your uh, map for the um, septic plan approval. Oh, okay. So that's where I found it. Okay, in, in reference to the shed? Yes. Okay. That it is, shows it in I the I haven't shed. seen that, so, okay. So I'll just have my other note that the well was inside the shed. I don't know where I'd find out anything more about it. It's probably been there since the original house. It did look like it, it did look like an artesian wall, right? Okay, I don't know how far. In, in the picture, it did a mask and mention it looked like an artesian wall. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Um, <coughs> so I'm thinking, you know, the travel portion of the road obviously is right there to the side of the shed. If we can keep that open, I think and we've had an agreement to that tonight. I think that that's. That is one of the bigger issue there than, um, yeah, we definitely would like to, uh, to have some clarification on the shed and kind of work that out and uh, we'll include you on that um, correspondence. Mm -hmm. It's something that's been there for a long time. I think you might be able to get an equitable waiver to some sort of effect, but I'm not sure the time was to provide anything uh, like that to them because it was something that was probably just built and uh, nobody noticed it until it was done for a period of time. And, uh, and, and it's my understanding that in a situation like this, there um, at least is not any clear answer as to the, the you know, the, the, the public's right of way um, sort of being waived, released, or right. you know, overtaken by something existing within it. Um, that would have to be done some, at the town meeting if it was to be done. Yeah. Some, you know, somebody plants a tree within the right of way, the town can still go by and remove that. So right. it's not like the public right of way um, or the public's rights to have been, been diminished. Has been right, right, diminished in any way. Well, people put their lawns and yeah. the sprinkler heads and all that on the up to the edge of pavement now. Yeah. That doesn't mean that the public's right is impugned in any way. Wait all. a second. If they can put the grass and the sprinkler heads up to the edge of the traveled way. Yeah. The, town could, the town could still go through and remove it within, right. within, the, within the public right of way. That's all. But that doesn't interfere with the right to pass. That's not what we're talking about. No, I'm, no, I'm not saying you. But, but I, I, I would challenge you on that. A building that was six feet into the runway does impede the ability to pass. And especially if there's something on the other side of the road. Parking, maybe the uh, your butter is a parking on the other side of the road, and or it, it does have a potential impact in peak, and that's a concern. The pole needs to be moved. 
Well, the thing is, thing is, uh, you say the poll, and I'm going to challenge you the poll. Yes, I mean, you may be right. The poll may need to be moved. But I challenge you also. Your your structure may be need to be moved too. The poll is much further into the right away. Well, it's not in the kind of land, though. That needs to be understood. Understood. Okay, but the thing is, we'll, we'll talk about that. Okay. But the thing is, uh, but if, I think for now, I think the progress they, I want to, mm -hmm. not go in a circle, but the progress here is, we're not going to block it right away. That's not a problem. At all times, it'll be open for somebody to drive through. Thank you. That's, that's, that's all we, that's, we need to do, right? At this point, yes. Yeah, so I think if there's a further letter from the board, mm -hmm. we'll do that. But I think tonight we are uh, reaffirming. 2002 letter, which states that nothing can be parked in that right of way, which would include all three of your paragraphs anyway. So, uh, Ryan, are you down there? Yes, I am. Copy? I don't think I'll be down. Yeah. Why don't you ask the question and we'll talk to Ryan. Um, just a question on the um, attorney CC's letter. He did not accept out the shed. He's asked you guys to have him remove everything. I think I'd like to keep the shed separate if I could. That's all. Yeah, we have we didn't include that when we just okay. in our discussion. Okay. I mean it says we the it's previous good. letter is what we're relying on for two thousand and two. Okay. And it says nothing in the right of way, but we are gonna go down a different path with the shed and we're gonna include okay. it only for the, the fact that it's been there since at least two thousand and so with the town council that's fine. Yeah, it's, and yeah. and we'll go to town council. And the biggest thing I see about the shed is, as you were talking about being on the side of the right of way, the travel portion seems to be just this side of the shed. If they keep that open so they can pass it properly, mm -hmm. access their property, go through there, and you can access your property through there. Um, and even, you know, beyond that, I know it's the, it's the part of the road that's been given back to you guys as a butters, but if you guys can respect each other on that end of the road, it might help in the long run as well. You know, the size of this shed protects the well, but it doesn't protect it from the contamination right. that comes from the ground. Right. And, and so no harm, yeah, no harm, uh, old harm. So uh, the reason I asked the Department of Police Department to be here tonight is so that um, you can go back, this is a public record now, and you guys can reference this public record, so if you do have to go out there and there's parking within that right of way, um, there's a clear picture here that shows it, Brian, at the, um, um, I'll have you come up and take a quick look at this photograph. Does the town have a parking ordinance? No, what? I'm sorry. A parking ordinance. No. I'll have to follow up with you on that panel. Yeah, no. We do have several ordinances, but some have been passed and some have not. If you could let me know on that, that would be helpful. There is a form up there, I believe. It has a yellow on the right there. Just, just beyond that way, boy. So none of these would be allowed, you know. The shed is right there. Uh, there's the shed again. That wouldn't be allowed. See the travel right of way. The way the paint area is going. Yeah. And the pavement's kind of broken up there, so it's not all. I was looking for your uh, oh, yeah, it's yellow. It's it's here it is. Yeah, it's so if you're coming down, here's where Holmes Road turns up. This is the section of Old Route 13 from this point down where it's green shaded, uh, was discontinued by the town. So even though both the butters have the right to use that section of road, the public doesn't. So it still should be kept open just so that they can use it themselves. But this part is the public right of way, and there's that being that shit is partially in the right of way. We're trying to keep this traveled section of the old Route 13 open for passage. So if there's parking here or in that right of way, you guys will have leave to you a color copy there. But I think we've got. I already scanned that. We'll put it down there. Yeah, and this copy is the most important one because it has a good line across there and you can see it visually. And um, I just want your department to be aware of it so that way when you guys go down there, you know, from that point lower is more of a civil matter. At this point here is a town matter, so. It, I, you know, without that clarification, you know, you guys go there, it's kind of a gray area, but I think tonight we want to make sure that you guys have that clarification. Absolutely. And I'm just hoping you get a call. Exactly. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the night. Thank you. Uh,
Right. We'll make sure you have that copy if you guys can just address it within the department. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm not sure. I know that we do have some parking ordinance stuff that goes on during our whole home day. I'm not sure if it reflects in the other rural areas. I'll check that for you. Yeah, I don't know if you can apply it across the board. <coughs> right. It's the same one place out. That's why I'm asking. So we'll just figure something out. Yeah. Okay. I think, uh, you know, and again, going back to the travel. The travel was a good way to use it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. You have anything else? No, no, no. I want to appreciate you guys all coming in tonight and spending your time trying to resolve this, okay? Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Today. For the owner, it's cheaper than going to court. Oh, God. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. See ya. Thank you. It's a similar area. Maybe on the house, right? Yeah. Good to see you. Thank you guys for coming in tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I would just make a general suggestion if the, if the police department also can have like those two letters from the from the fire boards. Yeah. Thank you guys. The only thing we personally know is the poll may be a problem with something that is not just saying the last yeah. the yeah. house. Yeah. But if you took the sheet off, the wellhead becomes a problem. Yeah. 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 I've got to put all this stuff in this file yeah. 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 You know, the, the, uh, the only thing that's going against us is the town. That done has been there for 20, how many years? Since 2000? And then so? Does it make the right to No, I don't. What no. happens is somebody could say take it down because it is in the right way. Yeah, that's that's what I want to make sure that we're lined up. Uh, I want to make sure we make a decision properly with legal counsel on that. I think I'd like to make sure that. You know where the where the wealth is? It's a big building. Yeah, it does. I mean, it's a big building, right? Right. It could be way over to the side. Dave found it on Monday. Well, they take the shed down and it's the wealth is way over. Dave found it. Where was the wealth in the building? Was it more in the uh, unhidden side? Or? I'll only show you. Okay. You know, people buy houses and buy problems all the time. It doesn't come back on the public. You know what I mean? So my point is, if you have to take it over, it's still going to be a That's my point. You want to get yeah. this one right so you don't have that yeah. again. Yeah. Well, that's so close, I think. So what is it? Is it close to the end? Right on the end. Right on the end, please. Yeah. 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 But you know, Dave, how people did things uh, back then. Oh, yeah. Whatever they wanted to do, they thought. Really? Yeah. 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 The buildings never have been so, so actually, it's not. It's not. Uh, See, I see the same. Mr. Soul, having plenty of access without that, that's not the issue. 
No, but for this building, no. No, no, but I mean, no, 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 I want to make sure he has the uh, 2002 decision to go with that. <coughs> do, you, do you know where that is? You want me to show it to you? Yeah, I see you brought the page of that one. Is that true? Do you want me to need that? Oh. Well, I there goes our public record. No, no, we haven't ever done that. I know. <laughs> It's responsibility both ways. That's the two no, because obviously the someone was close to the middle of the road at one point. If you yes, I know. But well, I understand that because I never thought to be on that ship. And that. I know that if the Congress continues the rule, both the bodies own for the middle. Right. It's handy to have a few nice to have it there. Yeah. And you still have access to it. As a, as a uh, letter. That's a good question. I don't have access to it. Yes. Yeah. If he has any questions, have him give me a call. But, but this to me, it's a new thing. It's already been removed. Yeah. Yeah. The pulse has been removed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is not even bringing up. To me, it was fluff. The hardest thing is you guys come on and there's nothing clearly stated where it is. You know how we look at it. This is civil one. Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's really not. Yeah. We're going to ask them so far out this weekend. They always have something for Perfect. Just bring the taser with you when you go. So, yes, have a good night. Thank you. Thank you for being here. No problem. We're the only Agent for this kind of box down there? Yeah. In that area? Yeah. yeah. The house there built a garage. It was there for five, six years. And then they discovered they didn't have a permit and they said they had a garage there. Oh, and he's just using that as an example. They had a bigger right now. All of us with a cement slab they were, we went by from, but it was a garage there. It's yeah. a slab that. Well, technically here, I mean, this is a new building permit for from Bay Search. Okay. Yeah. But the thing is, it needs more research. They'd be going to court if you tried to push that out. Oh, no, no, no. Is something that's 25 years old? Yeah, that's, that's why I want a legal opinion. I don't want to. They're not supposed to come in here. I believe there's risk to Well, of course. The waiver would be like they have that. There's a legal waiver, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good for this. Go back to the agenda. Back to the agenda. Public comment, Leo. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think you're worn out? You should be all the talking I do with this mask. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you back this pile afterwards. Must be pretty wet on it. Huh? Must be pretty wet on it. It's damp. Okay. Um, bringing this up on the camera. How is it they do that? Bring this back to order. <laughs> um, I think that we got, I think that this went a long way tonight. I think that, uh, I think we had some resolution that they can work with. Um, public comment has passed. Um, I'll make a motion to go to non-public per RSA 91 dash Three, number two, paragraph B, a hiring.